Those that went down today in those rescheduled fixtures, there was also one between Aqua United and Dakada International. Also on the show tonight, I'll let you know what's going on with football in Nigeria. The Nigeria Football Federation have appointed former Super Eagles captain Joseph Yobo as assistant coach of the team. You can be part of the program on Twitter channels, underscore sports, Facebook channels, I think sports, and send us an email to sports tonight at channelstv.com. Let's continue our countdown to the 20th edition of the National Sports Festival, Edo 2020. That's what it has been tagged. 37 more days to go. Yesterday in Benin City, Edo State are kicked off their own sports festival. Uh, all the local government uh, areas are competing in that one. The state says they want to use their sports festival to test the facilities for the main event that will kick off on March the 20th. We love it so much because the National Sports Festival is an avenue uh, for discovering and nurturing talent in the country. And that's so, so good for um, sports development in Nigeria. 37 more days to go. So I keep a date with that. Some states have concluded their, national, their sports festival. Others are planning to have. Quara, they've done theirs. Emo, they've done that. Theirs. Edo is having their own now. I'm sure more states will have their sports festival before we get to the main event in March, March the 20th, 2020. 20th edition of the National Sports Festival, 37 days to go. Are you ready for that one? I'm pumped up for it. A countdown to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics. That's big for Nigeria. And look, the Olympics is no joke. It's the world's biggest sporting event. And every time it comes, uh, it's an opportunity to talk about one problem or another right here in Nigeria because the same issues still pop up from funding to athletes' welfare to even infrastructure to even kids so much. 162 more days to go to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics and we have been asking this question. But how ready is Team Nigeria? Because... Uh, we, we are just so big of, as a country to go to Tokyo and just fill in the numbers. Uh, funding, funding, that's a major issue. A big setback to sports development in Nigeria. Uh, ministers have come and gone and they cannot solve this issue of funding. If it's working in South Africa, why is it not working in Nigeria? If Kenya uh, is trying to also get into the mix that says, look, are more of private partnership to get to sports to kill this issue of funding. Why is it not working in Nigeria? The Honorable Minister of Youth and Sports Development, Sunday Dari, is trying to address this issue of funding as we look forward to the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Let's listen to him. We'll be right back. Just as we have in all other sectors, there's a, a paucity of funds. So it's been a balancing act. Um, Government, modern government, cannot and does not fund everything 100%. In fact, we are behind. In some other countries, um, only the private sector funds sports development. It is only when they go for international, continental competitions that government comes in. But we have a working arrangement with the federations. They have their independence. They elect their board members. We're able to give them some percentage of the funds they need, and they have the independence to source for funds. And the government doesn't necessarily um, demand from them, oh, how did you get the funds, how did you spend it? They have that independence, but we're able to match. And we've done, the government has done considerably well. Um, when they went to Italy, the government funded them, even though the funds came a bit late. All years, just a week ago, the, the government provided the funds. So it's a, it's a joint partnership, and like you know, we're trying to develop a business model around sports to bring private money into sports, just like we have in, in, other, uh, in Europe, in the Americas, in Canada. We're trying to adopt the same model. Once we have that, a lot of private money will point to government, and these federations will not really need government. The less government you have in sports development, the better it is. The less government you have in sports development, the better it is. And I agree with the minister. So it's about the federations now are looking for a way to 
brand themselves, to package themselves. Table tennis, you've got Aaron or Quadri, you've got Olufunke or Sean Ike. How can we package these athletes in a way that it can bring about some funding, some partnership? Wrestling, we've got Oduanyo at the crew here. We talk about her, she's a talent, she's a star. How can wrestling package Oduanyo at the crew here? to kill this issue of funding. The minister made that statement when it was an accursed visit to Bielsa State where he met the president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, Daniel Igali. You saw him at the back of the minister in that interview. Let's go to Yenagwa at the Bielsa State capital. The president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, Daniel Igali, joins us on the show. A good evening, Daniel Igali. Welcome to Sports Tonight. Good evening, uh, my good man, and thank you for having me on your program. Awesome. I, I want to, to start off where the minister stopped. He said, uh, if we get government off sports development, the better for us. How important is it for federations to start tackling this issue of funding? Well, as you know, this has been a perennial problem. It's the big elephant in the room when it comes to sports, and this affects virtually every sport in Nigeria. Uh, it, it's something we have to tackle together. The, the, the private sector is immense in this regard. Um, people need to understand that sports is a unifying factor in Nigeria, and everybody has to pitch in and wants to do that. Even though we may not be able to still take care of it 100%, and get 70 80% of funding, I think we're going to get a bit further than we are now. Mm. Let's talk about uh, the Africa Senior Wrestling Championship. Team Nigeria again emerged overall champions. And the, theme, the women's team didn't fail. Um, I know you were expecting more gold medals than what the female team got. What sort of competition was it for you? Um, we went with 10. Our goal really was to maintain our status as African champions. Uh, we won six out of ten gold medals uh, probably could have won more i think we're capable of winning more i think we're capable of winning about eight gold medals uh, but they did very well i was very impressed with uh, our newest gold medalist um uh, i said uh, 17 years just on 18 now yeah. esther kula wale of 55 kilograms this is her first senior title she was dominant let me know that four matches scored 40 points in fact, the UWW termed that the wrestler of the week last year, the last mm. week. I would want to say it's now number one in the world. Lesson of Brodery is number two in the world. We have uh, uh, our male wrestler, um, Emmanuel, who is now num number nine in the world. You know, we're, we're going up. I'm, I'm excited with the way they wrestled, and I'm just hoping for them to come back so we can get back into camp and get ready for the qualifiers next month. Mm, I know our, our ladies reign supreme, uh, retain their championship uh, title once again. But let's talk about uh, Aminat Adeni and Blessing Oebuchi. I've watched them closely. They are champions in their own right. What went wrong? They were beat. That's what went wrong. They lost. <laughs> um, and, and it happened. It happened. Um, both of them were caught. I mean, that was caught. I, I was actually a little bit uh, disappointed that she 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 got caught in something that we've been working on. So I think we need to get back to the drawing board because we're going back to the Olympic qualifiers. And for us, that is a big match in Africa. The girl she lost to won a, a Marwa from uh, uh, Tunisia, won a bronze medal at the Olympics and a silver medal at the World Championship. So she's not a pushover. But it's somebody we've also beaten before. So we, we need to get back to our winning ways against him. Blessing Onyekuchi, in my view, is the best athlete of 76 and should not lose to anybody in Africa. Mm. But I can assure you that in the next three weeks, Blessing will get back to form and will easily handle that Egyptian at the Olympic qualifiers. That's it. That's why I picked out those two names because I was expecting Bless No Ibuchi to go for good. But we'll keep the silver. Let's talk about the men. You see, for the women, uh, we can we can bring out Esther Kolawole, a boss as Samuel. We can also put Sumisola Balogun as some of the revelation we've gotten from wrestling. But with the men, we're still talking about Soso Tamara. 
what are we doing to get more male wrestlers that can start winning medals? Well, we have uh, John Emmanuel, who is uh, now a four-time uh, African champion and four-time straight African champion. He's just 23, 24. He's young. Um, so, you, so you have hope in a, a, a number of the younger athletes that are coming up. And Soso Tamara is still there because nobody has been able to beat him. And if you if even wouldn't want him to go, uh, somebody has to beat him in Nigeria before. Uh, they can represent the country, so he's still there. But I think the men have a bit of catch to do. We've had those discussions with them, and we're hoping that we have a, a few younger kids come up. It might take a while, but in another three, four, five years, we should be able to have guys who will be completely winning to Africa and winning medals and even challenging at the world level. We're expecting the team back in the country yesterday. Uh, flights delayed. They couldn't come today. We're still here that they're held back in Istanbul. What's the update on the team getting back to the country? Yeah, they were supposed to come yesterday. Their flight was delayed. Um, again, today, they were even on the, on the verge of leaving for the airport. Their flight was again delayed. What, from what I understand, um, there are sandstorms in Lagos, and that's why they couldn't come, because the flight from... Istanbul to Abuja took off today. So what I've directed the secretary to go to do is to go very early in the morning to uh, Turkish Airlines and rebook their flights through Abuja. Mm. So hopefully they will be able to come tomorrow. Too. I must say thank you so much, Daniel Igali, for your time. Always a delight to have you on the show. Thank you. Thank you very much for having me. And thank you for putting So that's it. The president of the Nigeria Wrestling Federation, Daniel Igali, speaking to us from Yenagua in Bayelsa State Sports tonight on Channels Television. Let's go on this break. When we come back, more updates coming from our world of sports. Don't go anywhere. Stay. Welcome back to Sports Tonight on Channels Television. You can be part of the show on Twitter, Channels underscore sports, Facebook, Channels, IFS Sports. Let's get on with the show now. I'll let you know more Olympic updates, by the way, because we're just coming from the countdown to the Olympics. We spoke, we heard the Minister of Youth and Sports saying, are for funding to work. The, the federations, they must do their part. We took it to Daniel Igali, who also said and confirmed that uh, this is a problem. Let's talk about table tennis. The African Table Tennis Federation, the ATTF, uh, they have released the list of players that will compete in the singles and mixed doubles qualification event scheduled for February the 27th to the 29th in Tunisia. The ATTF has said this is the final opportunity for African players to be part of the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games in China. If you don't take this chance, goodbye to the Olympics. Eight players made up of four men and four women in singles, in the singles uh, category, including one mixed doubles pair, will qualify for the Olympics from this qualification event in Tunisia. Each national association is expected to present two players each in the singles event of men and women and one team in the mixed doubles event. Nigeria's Shegun Toriola, Aaron Akwadri, Olajide Omotayo, Olufunke Oshonaike, and Edem of Young have been listed to feature in the final qualification tournament. So let's wish Team Nigeria all the best. She's trying to talk to Olufunke Oshonaike uh, the other day. And she said, look, I still am focused on picking another ticket to the Olympics. So final window. If you don't qualify from this one, goodbye to Tokyo. Progress. They did digress. They keep making progress. And uh, they have moved up three places in the latest FIBA ranking uh, to become Africa's number one. Stand up for the champions. The African champions who booked their place to the Tokyo 2020 Olympics after finishing behind Serbia and the United States in the Belgrade group are now ranked number 14 in the world. 14 in the world, number one in Africa. Basketball world governing body FIBA said the February ranking is the final one ahead of the Tokyo 2020 Women's Olympic Basketball Tournament draw. FIBA confirms that the February ranking will be used to determine the seeding when the draw ceremony takes place on March the 21st. Congratulations to Nigeria's senior women's basketball team, the D Tigress. They keep making progress. We love them so much. Uh, ranked 14th in the world and undisputed number one in Africa. Still on the Olympics, Egypt under-23 head coach Shauki uh, Garib has confirmed that Liverpool forward Mohamed Salah will be called up to play for the Pharaohs at the 2020 Tokyo Olympics. Yes, they're not taking chances. Remember, 
five senior team players can be part of the squad, although the Olympic tournament is mainly for players under the age of 23, each national team can have three older players in their squad. And Gary has said that the 27-year-old will be one of those chosen for Egypt squad. The men's football tournament in Tokyo is scheduled to kick off on July the 23rd. And we finish with a final on August the 8th, the same day the 2020-2021 Premier League season will commence. As a result, Salah will miss Liverpool's pre-season for the third summer running after being involved in both the 2018 FIFA World Cup and the 2019 Africa Cup of Nations. You see why some, some clubs will say, look, 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 just leave us with our players. Uh, so Salah will not be part of the preseason for Liverpool if he agrees to follow Egypt's under-23 team to the Tokyo 2020 Olympic Games. No Nigeria for the football event in Tokyo. Uh, it hurts, but that's what it is. It's what you sow, you reap. Let's bring the discussion to football in Nigeria. Now, let me let you know that the Nigeria Football Federation, the NFF, they have appointed former Super Eagles defender and captain Joseph Yobo as assistant coach. That was Joseph Yobo two years ago when he visited the camp of the Channels International Kids Cup. He loves football at the grassroots. He's been there, done that with football, and now he's been appointed assistant coach of the Super Eagles. Right after the announcement, I called Joseph Yobo, and he says... It is an honor to be called upon to serve his country and that he's looking forward to uh, the experience. Yobo replaces Imama Amakpakabo in the three-time African champions technical crew. Yobo played for Nigeria in three FIFA World Cup finals in 2002, 2010, and 2014. The 39-year-old also played in six Africa Cup of Nations uh, final in 2002, 2004, 2006, 2008 and 2010, and he capped it with leading the Super Eagles to their third continental title in South Africa in 2013. Yobu played a total of 100 matches for Nigeria at the senior level. So congratulations, yeah, the deal uh, for Joseph Yobu, but you guys have been asking loads of questions. What sort of coaching qualification does Joseph Yobu have? Uh, why is he just joining the Super Eagles at this crucial time? I'll try to get Joseph Yobo on this show to answer some of these questions, but can you question the experience of Joseph Yobo? That's the question other persons are asking. That He knows football, and he, is, he has said that it is an honor to be called upon to serve the Super Eagles, and he's looking forward to that experience. We'll keep tabs on the development of Joseph Yobo being appointed assistant coach of the Super Eagles. Let's bring the discussion to the Nigeria Professional Football League. Some rescheduled games went down today and champions, Aimba, they defeated Wikitori 3-0 in one of the rescheduled matches of the Nigeria Professional Football League. Stanley Gim Dingba scored twice as People's Elephants uh, achieved their third consecutive wins after victories over MFM and local rivals Abia Warriors. Aimba now 11th on the league table. Rangers International moved out of the relegation zone after beating Jigawa Golden Stars 1-0, uh, courtesy of a 70th, 70th minute strike from Dauda Madaki. Nigeria International in the Freke F. Young Scott from the penalty spot as Aqua United held their younger brother, uh, Dakada, in a four-goal thriller in Uyo, the Aquaibon State capital. Uh, so they end the LMC, they said, look, uh, we don't we don't know uh, we don't want persons to start doubting the integrity of the league because we're getting into the business stage. That's why they brought this fixture forward, the one between Aqua United and Dakada, because they are both from the same region. And now that is out of the way. So we like that. And 2-2, two -two, it's ended. They share the sports. So we've been talking about the Nigeria Professional Football League, and we love it so much. But the NNL, the Nigeria National League, is also very, very important. In fact, some persons have described it as the most important league in the country because that's where teams gain promotion to the MPFL. And for some time now, the league has been stalled. Last night, I started asking the question, when is the NNL resuming? Everybody involved with football administration in Nigeria, what is going on with the Nigeria National League? Some teams have already cut... Um, some good form, and they are looking forward to, to the league and also gaining promotion. When is the NNL resuming? 
I'll ask this question again tomorrow. I'll keep asking till it comes back. That's how far we can go on this edition of Sports Tonight on Channels Television. But let's keep the conversation going on Twitter, Channels underscore Sports, Facebook Channels, I think Sports. That's the show for the team. I'm Austin Okonakpan. In everything you do, remember, keep talking sports. Bye for now.